In this video, we're going to show you how to install the tie rod end on your Jeep Wrangler located on the passenger side. Using a 19 millimeter socket, go ahead and loosen and remove the lug nuts and then remove the wheel. Loosen and remove the nut on the stabilizer shock here using a 19 millimeter socket. Want to remove the cotter pin here. Now ours is pretty rusted. What we want to try and do is bend the legs of this back. And on yours, you might have two legs. You might have one on there. Wanna, oh, they're just breaking off. And on the other side, we have the eyelet over here. So I'm going to use my pliers and I want to try and grab that eyelet and pull that cotter pin out. Pinch and pull, pinch and pull. There we go. There's the cotter pin. On the outer tie rod here, right by the brakes, we're going to do the same thing. Now sometimes if that cotter pin should break off inside, you would just remove the nut and then you can drill that out afterwards. Using a 19 millimeter socket, loosen the nut here. Now we did soak this down in some rust penetrant before tackling this here. On the outer tie rod here over by the knuckle, use your 19 millimeter socket loosen that nut as well. Now normally you can use a ball joint tool here to go up behind. I'm just going to use my air hammer and just give it a couple taps right here to see if we can pop this out. Like so. Loosen the clamp right here and this one here. This uses a 14 millimeter socket on the nut side, 15 on the bolt side. On our knuckle side here for the outer tie rod with the nut removed, we're gonna use our hammer. We're gonna strike the knuckle, releasing the tie rod end. Our next step is to go ahead and unthread our outer tie rod end out of this adjuster sleeve right here. The thing is, you wanna go ahead and count how many full revolutions this takes to remove this from the sleeve so we can thread in the new one and get a preliminary alignment at that point there. I'm gonna go ahead and use a crayon, mark a spot here. And I'm gonna go ahead and start unturning or unthreading this. Thirty-seven full rotations to remove the old one. I'm just going to use my crayon and I'm just going to write that thirty-seven so that we're there. I don't have to worry about forgetting that. I'm going to put some anti-seize compound inside the threads here. Thread in your new tie rod end. Now when you start threading this in, we're pretty much lining up the ball joint because it goes up straight up and we're going to get a general location for this here coming down to where the crayon was initially. Now the thread's just caught. What I'm going to do, line this up, and I'm going to put a yellow mark right here to line up with this one here. 
And because it just caught on the threads, I'm gonna start counting my 37 full revolutions from that point. Now that we have our lines lined up here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-assemble these components. Well, this is up and out of the way. It'll help us fit things in here a little bit easier. Pop that in. No, on the outside end here, we have a protective cap, a plastic cap. Remove that. Go ahead and pop the nut out. You can discard this. Now our ball joint here is pretty tight because it's new and it's going up at an angle. I'm gonna install this little cap right here and I'm gonna use this to protect the threads, but I'm gonna go ahead and work that so that, that ball joint is fading, facing up and in to the knuckle. Let's go ahead and get that nut started here. Now those bolts that come through, we can go ahead and put some anti-seize compound on those as well. Go ahead and get that nut started. Install our lock washer over here. Get the nut started. On the new outer tie rod on here, we're gonna use an 18 millimeter to go ahead and snug this nut down. Let's go ahead and tighten this nut down here. Let's tighten down the nut for our damper. On our adjusting collar here, we can go ahead and tighten these nuts back down. those are good and tight. Now on the outer tie rod end here, you wanna go ahead and torque this to 35 foot-pounds. Now in doing so, you wanna pay attention to the castle nut. There's gonna be notches all the way around the nut itself. And when you torque this down, you wanna make sure that the hole in the ball joint stud lines up with the notch in the castle nut. So let's go ahead and torque this to 35. And we have our hole here. We have our cotter pin. Slide that through. I'm gonna pull that through and we're gonna bend over one of the tabs here. Just tap that down. And then we're gonna use our cutters and cut off the access. Same thing on the upper portion. A little bit of the excess. Torque the nut down for your drag length to 35 foot pounds. You want to look for the hole in the stud here to line up the castle nut for your cotter pin. Go ahead and feed that cotter pin through. Use your cutters if you want and grab the one of the tabs, bend that over, tap that down and cut off the excess. Torque down the two clamping bolts here to 20 foot pounds. Our bolt is spinning, so we'll have to put our wrench on the other side. Now that we have our passenger side outer tie rod end fully installed, we want to get installed that passenger side front wheel, then bring it down to your local alignment shop and get that taken care of to prevent premature tie wear or premature wear of any other steering component. Go ahead and install your wheel. Go ahead and get your lug nuts installed. I'm just going to get these all started first and then we'll come back and snug them down.
torque your lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.